This is K.M. Wyland, and you're listening to the 163rd episode of the Wordplay Podcast. This week marked a flurry of work, most of which would be extremely boring in the recounting. So I'll spare you the details and just say that I've finished up the last big edit on Dreamlander. It'll be off to the copy editor due soon, and then we'll be seeing the first of the galleys. In order to make this all less boring, you can insert a mental image of me doing a little celebratory tap dance right here. I also finished transcribing my character interviews for Storming and completed the world-building template. Now I get to dive into the outline itself, to which you can insert a mental image of me clutching my notebooks and squealing for joy. How to use foreshadowing to jazz up slow scenes. The latest post in the video series on my blog offers tips on how to use foreshadowing to inject just enough tension to keep readers hooked even during otherwise slow and seemingly peaceful scenes. To watch it, visit my blog at wordplay-kmyland, that's w-e-i-l-a-n-d dot blogspot dot com. New videos are posted every Wednesday. And now, I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast, Five Ways You're Keeping Readers from Suspending Disbelief. Unlike nonfiction or memoir, the whole point of fiction is that it isn't true. Or rather, that's half the point. The other half is that this untruth is constructed in the pattern of truth, in order to shine a light on the reality of our lives. As Pablo Picasso said, art is the lie that tells the truth. Readers open a book with the understanding that everything to follow is fake, but they also open that book with the understanding that the author is going to do his darndest to make part of the reader's brain believe it's true. Enter suspension of disbelief. This is fiction's secret sauce, its magic bean, its linchpin. Without suspension of disbelief, the whole thing falls apart. Every time a reader fails to believe, a story dies. Fortunately for us, readers are more than happy to hold up their end of the deal. They begin our stories with every intention of keeping their disbelief firmly at bay. In other words, the game is ours to lose. Today, let's take a look at the five most common ways authors kill their readers' suspension of disbelief and, by extension, their stories. 1. Incorrect Facts Fiction and fact are often presented as opposites. In reality, they're more like symbionts. Without a foundation of solid facts, fiction folds in on itself like a house of jello. Readers are smart. Some of them are as smart as you. Some of them are even smarter. So, you may not know how fast light travels, what koalas eat, or what year Napoleon died, but you can be sure they will. And if you mess up too often and too spectacularly, they're not going to invest any belief in the rest of your book either. 2. Unrealistic Character Reactions Human psychology is at the root of all fiction. The characters that populate our stories, their personalities, their psyches, their choices, and their reactions drive the plot. If your characters can't pull off a believable similitude of realism, readers won't buy them. And nowhere is this realism more evident, or not evident, as the case may be, than in your characters' reactions to the events that are thrown their way. They may react passively, aggressively, stupidly, or emotionally. There's no rule on how they have to react, just that they must react in a way that comports with their personalities, motives, and emotional states. 3. Lack of Character Reactions The only thing worse than the wrong character reaction is no character reaction. A character who never reacts, or one who always reacts in the same way, is going to fall short of a believable human being. Worse, he's going to lead the reader down the slippery slope of predictability and monotony. When something tremendous happens to your character, take the time to let him react. Don't brush over it. Let readers see what's going on in the character's head. Beware of the pitfall of assuming your reader's reactions are discernible from the context. Subtlety is good, but to quote Vonnegut, readers should have such complete understanding of what is going on, where, and why, that they could finish the story themselves should cockroaches eat the last few pages. 4. Clichés Clichés almost always become clichés by starting out as brilliant ideas. But when you choose to redo something that's already been done a gazillion times, 
You're surrendering creative control of your story. By trying to give your cliché the air of originality, whether intentionally or more likely obliviously, you're offering readers a prime opportunity to chortle in your face. They've already seen this bit more times than they can count. The fact that they're seeing it again is not only yawn-inducing, it's also disbelief-generating. 5. Plot Holes Finally, let us not forget to pay ode to those gaping caverns of inconsistency. The more complicated our plots, the more difficult it is to tie up all the loose ends. Leave one of these ankle breakers out in the open, and you can bet you're going to have a reader step in it and sue for damages. Everything that happens in your story requires a plausible source of existence and a logical explanation. In other words, if you can't pay off in the end, don't promise in the beginning. In his classic Techniques of the Selling Writer, Dwight V. Swain wrote, Fiction is built on a suspension of disbelief. If your story people behave irrationally or without cause, normal discernment rises to shatter the illusion you're trying to create. If you can avoid these five illusion destroyers, you'll be well on your way to a happily suspended and blissfully disbelieving audience. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, visit me on the web at wordplay-kmyland, that's W-E-I-L-A-N-D, dot blogspot.com, and be sure to listen again next week. 